Hi Bobcats! In this video, we're going to take a look at something known as the kinetic molecular theory of gases. The objectives of this video are to look at the postulates, the ideas of the kinetic molecular theory, and to connect these stories we tell about the particle motion to things about a gas that we can observe, things like the volume or the pressure or the temperature. The five ideas or postulates of the kinetic molecular theory uh, talk about how gas particles move. So for instance, the first uh, postulate says that particles are in rapid continuous motion in straight lines at a variety of speeds. So that means some particles move faster than others, uh, some move more slowly, and they're always moving in straight lines. They aren't going in spirals or some other sort of path. Also, it says that the particles are tiny compared to the distances between them. That particle in some textbooks is worded a little differently. It'll say something along the lines like, um, most of the volume of a gas is empty space. And that's because the particles are separated by such large distances. Another postulate says that the particles are non-interacting. This simply means that the um, particles are in such rapid motion and they're so far apart from one another that intermolecular forces are essentially zero. In fact, if intermolecular forces start to become a strong factor, the gas particles will actually condense and turn into a liquid. Uh, let's see, the next one says that energy is conserved in collisions of particles. If you're looking at this idea more from the physics perspective, they'll often say that collisions of particles are elastic because elastic collisions simply means that energy is conserved. And the last postulate says that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of gas particles. Basically, the important implication of this one is that as the temperature increases, the particles move more rapidly because kinetic energy is that energy of motion. In a physics class, you would say that kinetic energy is one half mv squared, where m is the mass of the particles and v is the speed. So if the kinetic energy goes up and it's the same gas particles, so the mass isn't changing, then the speed has to increase to keep that equality. The first example question we'll look at with KMT says to use the kinetic molecular theory to explain why a gas will expand to fill its container. Well, the easiest way for me to show you this is a series of screenshots from a FET simulation. On the next slide, I'll give you the URL for that simulation, but for this, for this slide, I just want to show you some of these grabs, screen grabs. Okay, so in this first diagram, um, I used the little tire pump looking thing that's right here to pump a little bit of gas into the container. Now, we also have some tools available here. For instance, there's a pressure gauge so we can monitor the pressure. There's also a temperature gauge up top. And uh, let's see, um, if you're messing around with this, Note that down here is your heat source. Um, you have to like drag and hold it to continuously heat it or continuously cool it. And then also note that over here on the far left side, let's see, that's not working very well, so let me try a different color. Over here on the far left side is a handle that you can grab to change the volume of the container. All right, so I pumped a little bit of gas into it and then I stopped playing the animation so the gas particles all stopped in one spot. And then in this next image, I had advanced um, the simulation, allowed it to play out a little bit longer. Now, as those gas particles in the first diagram came in, they were all pretty much moving in this direction because they were pumped in right here at this little port. So they all came in and started spreading mostly to the left, some of them up and to the left. Um, so after a little bit more time has passed, then these uh, particles have generally shifted over here towards this side. Then I let it play a little bit more. And now those particles have bounced off of the far wall and are starting to move back 
uh, towards the right. Then I just let it go for a while, and as I let it go for a while, uh, the particles pretty much filled out the entire container. Um, and this last slide, instead of cropping a bunch of stuff, I left all of this stuff over here on the right so that you can see, you can tell it to hold certain things constant, and if you don't tell it to hold things constant, then it allows those parameters to vary. So basically, the answer here to why a gas will expand to fill its container is that those gas particles are moving in straight lines until they hit something like a wall to bounce off of. And so that random motion of the gases, if it, you give it long enough, um, allows the gas particles to distribute themselves throughout the entire container. So this slide has the link to the FET simulation and some suggestions of some things to experiment with. Uh, you have to start by pumping some gas into the chamber, and then you can use the different tools to heat or cool the sample, um, to hold pressure, temperature, or volume constant, to uh, change the volume and see how that affects pressure and temperature, all those sorts of things. And really just try anything, see what happens. What we're trying to figure out here by experimentation is the connection between these things that we use to characterize a gas, between the pressure, the temperature, and the volume, and to see how the motion of the gas particles contributes to all of this. Our next question asks us to use the KMT to explain why a sample of gas can be compressed to a much smaller volume. So I grabbed another uh, image from the FET simulation to show us a sample of a gas in a fairly large volume. I expanded that container to the largest uh, volume that it can have there at the FET site. And check out how the particles have arranged themselves to nicely fill that space. Well, what I did next was I took the handle that allows you to change the size of the container, which is right over here, and I dragged it over to the right to make this container as small as possible. And here's what I ended up with. Now notice what happened to the gas particles when I did that. As I compressed that volume to a much smaller volume, the particles got closer to one another because the spacing between gas particles is large compared to the size of the particles. So if we compress the size of the container or reduce the size of the container, we simply make the particles come closer to one another. We just lose some of that empty space that's between gas particles. This question asks us to use the kinetic molecular theory to explain how the motion of particles produces pressure, which is a force applied over an area. So pressure is defined as a force divided by the area over which that force is acting. Um, the, when it comes to gases and their motion, the force involved is the force of the collisions of the gas particles with the walls of the container, and the area is the surface area of that container. If you go back to the FET simulation, try experimenting with different things that will cause that will change how the particles hit the walls of the container. For instance, if you increase the temperature, the particles will move faster. And as they move faster, they hit the walls more often and with more force on each one of those collisions. And so that will increase the pressure. Um, if you cool it down, the opposite happens. The force gets reduced and you decrease the pressure. But basically, uh, by kinetic molecular theory, the molecular origin or the particle origin of uh, pressure is the force of particles colliding with the container. Anything that increases that force increases the pressure. I like this clicker question because it tests if you really understand the ideas 
of the KMT as opposed to just regurgitating the way that the ideas were written on the previous slide. Um, so the, what we're trying to identify is which one of these is not an idea from the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Let's see, part A says that most of the volume of a gas is empty space. Yes, that's another way of, this, of saying the statement that the particles are separated by large distances. So this one is good. And let's see, the next one says that particles do not attract or repel each other. Well, one of our postulates said that particles are non-interacting, and we talked about how intermolecular forces um, are a very, very minor effect in a gas. And so, yes, this is another way of saying that particles are non-interacting. Let's see, the next one says collisions between particles are elastic. Elastic collisions mean that energy is conserved, and that was one of our postulates. Let's see, then part D says that particles move in paths of many shapes. Um, I don't think so. The postulate very specifically said that the uh, gas particles move in straight line paths. They do not move in a variety of shapes. So we're looking at only straight line paths. Then the last one says that particles move faster at higher temperatures. Yes, that's true. The way we phrased it was that the kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature. So at a higher temperature, the particles have to move faster. Hopefully, after watching this video, you can now um, explain the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory, and you can connect the motion of particles to the things that we can observe in lab, such as pressure, volume, and temperature. Eat them up, cats.